Hey guys, welcome back to the Obi Thorian Lights. What are we doing today, Jacob? We're doing our top <clears throat> five MCU villains of all time. So we're going to rank our MCU villains. Stick around and see what we thought. So ranking MCU villains, there's a few different ways to do it. People might rank it on power. Some people might rank it on how scary they were, or you might just rank it on based upon how much you liked them, or it could be something different. So I think we're going to get a really unique list here. I guess as we give each number up, we can dis decide or describe why we put them in our list. So, keen to get into it? Number five for me was Hela and Thor Ragnarok. And for me, it was... Un I wasn't expecting to see... I didn't even know that Thor and Loki had a sister. And then that moment when we saw her destroy Milner, that was so surprising. And from there, her story was really told in an interesting way really enjoyed the storyline she went through with how she wanted more power and that her father uh didn't want her to have it and then at the end she went toe and toe and basically create Ragnarok. so number five i've got eric killmonger from the black panther movies the reason why I picked him, I think he's a relatable villain, you know, it's someone that was kind of, his heritage was hidden from him. He was a rightful heir of Wakanda and had the chance to be able to be the Black Panther if he wanted to. His father was killed in, you know, extreme circumstances by the Wakandans, basically he was sent on a mission and uh, they decided that they didn't need him anymore. It was quite sad and he discovered his origin went back, reclaimed being the Black Panther, because he, he was in fact stronger than T'Challa. Even though he's a villain and wanted evil things, he basically just wanted redemption and what was his and what was owed to him. So I think he's a, a villain that had a fair motive, and that's for me why I what I consider a good villain. I've done the same. My number four is Killmonger. Basically because Michael B. Jordan gave such a good performance, in my opinion, he was the reason why the Black Panther was such a great movie. I actually think it was a really bad choice to kill off Killmonger. I think if you kept him around, you actually could have done a redemption arc and then had Killmonger actually taken the mantle of the MCU. Same thing what Luke said, more of a reasonable villain. Was he a villain in a way? I guess he was really awesome way how he came and reclaimed his throne the best part about the black Pan first black panther hmm. so at number four i've gone with kang which surprisingly you might think is a bit low but i don't know enough about kang yet to think any higher of him i understand his motives you know he wants to kind of fix all these broken fractions that are within the multiverse but as to where his powers come from and the fact, you know, he was kind of like a scientist has found a way to go through space and time, I think is kind of cool, but I don't think his motivation is as strong as other villains, but I think what he potentially can do to the MCU is why I think he deserves to be on the list, but him himself I don't think is too threatening t at this present moment, but does pose a bigger threat as we discover more. Good choice. Mine number three is Loki, the original villain in the first Avengers film and probably the best storyline from the MCU with his movies and now he has his own show. Tom Hilliston played amazingly, really like his redemption arc, such a trick star. I think storyline wise he's the best villain betrayed really well. He's more of a trickster instead of actually being powerful. Really looking forward to seeing what he does in season two of Loki and his storyline I think is actually the best in, out of everyone in the MCU. Mm. So at number three I've gone with Gore the God Butcher. <clears throat> I didn't think Thor Love and Thunder was that good of a movie but I actually really enjoyed the performance of seeing Gore the God Butcher. I think he's reasons are, are great you know he'd seen you know gods kind of do what they want and take what they want and not actually give back to people and you know these people worshipped 
these gods and they were basically false prophets. So because of that, he kind of developed a, a hatred and, you know, ended up getting the weapon of a, um, a god and then that kind of infected him and he became evil. And I think in the end is a really like good story and was relatable. He ultimately just wanted to get to, you know, the end of the, like, I can't remember the name they give in the movie, but he was trying to get to the end of something which meant he could have one wish and get his daughter back. Mm. And he was willing to sacrifice himself to do that because in order to do that, he was going to die from the infection. He was, this evilness was creating inside of him, but it was worth it to bring his daughter back. So he was a villain that didn't want harm to people. He just wanted to kill gods, which kind of exposed gods to what they were and ultimately paid the sacrifice to save the one he loved. And I, I think it's really good. He's kind of easier villain. I, I don't know. Like I think is a I think is a, a great a great villain to be honest. Good choice. Mine number two is the Mad Titan himself, Thanos. The the Infinity Wars is basically his movie and he's the main character and he does an amazing job. Him getting Infinity Stones and in my opinion the best ending out of any superhero movie of all time. Wasn't expecting how the the villain would actually win. Really enjoyed his storyline and through throughout the Infinity Stone saga, he is the villain that had a amazing storyline out of all the villains. He was the main villain. All the other villains were uh, B grade villains, and really enjoyed his story arc. <clears throat> so at number two, I've also got Thanos. I I mainly liked Thanos because of the reason behind why he was doing what he was doing. He had yeah. seen his population where and his planet grow to be too large and not being able to survive. And he ultimately just felt the world was coming, the universe was coming overpopulated and he wanted to halve it. Yes, that meant a lot of destruction and when the snap occurred, the backlash that had on Earth was horrible. But his reasoning was basically he did the universe was sustainable, so he had a, a good motive but had a really bad way of achieving it. So I like that when a villain can be kind of liked or understood. And he was understood, he just went about it the wrong way. Mm. My number one is the new villain of the multiverse saga, Kane the Conqueror. I know a little bit more backstory about the character. Basically from the TV show version, what the MCU might do is that he basically wants to change the timeline so he can bring his timeline back because his loved one is dying. So they might do that as well. Basically in this timeline, there's a multiverse war between all the other Kangs and then he who remains basically wins and he controls the timeline and he's only a human and to me that's more fascinating than someone that was basically already powerful wanting to kind of kill people but for a good reason i think kane is really interesting with his powers and science i'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with the character because i think there's more possibilities mm -hmm. So at number one, I've gone with Scarlet Witch. I think Scarlet Witch is great because, you know, not only she's got a great backstory, she's a villain, redemption, villain, and then now kind of on a cliffhanger of where she is now and whether she's still alive. And I think they've built that really well. You know, she grew up in a war-stricken area and being kind of her and her brother had been forced to have powers through experimentation, mm. kind of used as weapons then became helpful for the Avengers. She's extremely powerful and all she really wants is a family. You know, her the whole One Division series I think is fantastic where she she's seen as a villain and they need to stop what she's doing, but she's not harming anyone. She's just kind of got these people in a state of trance where they don't really know why they're doing things, all so that she can live out this fantasy. But she just wants to have a family. And then we move into the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And she's, you know, the villain again, but she's just wanting these kids. She's just a mother that just wants to 
live this fake dream, but that's, she just wants to be a mother where she doesn't want murder, she doesn't want to destroy people. She does do that, but she just wants a family. And I think that's better than wanting world domination or wanting to be the, you know, the, the one who remains. She just wants a family, but she's willing to do it at any cost and she has the means to do it. She has very unique powers. Any honorable mentions? Maybe Bucky, the Winter Soldier. I think he's pretty decent, you know, again, redeems himself, but, you know, he killed a lot of people and he was weaponized, you know, basically against his own will. So, I, I, you know, I like that as a, a villain. Yeah, I would say the Winter Soldier as well. Well, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. There, as always, there's videos at the end if you want to watch more. Hope you enjoyed the content. As always, you are awesome. Bye-bye.